Hello everyone, this book review is on They Can't Kill Us All by Wesley Lowry. Wesley, who is a reporter at the Washington Post, has deservedly been given immense praise for this book that explores the origins and early days of the Black Lives Matter movement through an impressively skillful blend of on the ground reporting, conversations with friends and families of those black men and women killed by police in the USA and interviews with the um, voices and emerging leaders in the Black Lives Matter movement. Wesley has painted a really painful but powerful portrait of a nation confronting uh, its endemic police violence and the racism that remains in its society today. Starting in Ferguson in 2014 with the murder of Michael Brown by the cop Darren Wilson. And that's very important uh, that Wesley always picks up in the book. He always names the cop that was uh, the police officer that is accused of murdering these black men and women as much as the victim, um, because that is one of the issues that he confronts in this. But starting in Ferguson in 2014, Wesley follows the dreadful spate of killings from police of black men and women across the USA and look to explore not just the short-term and long-term um, origins of this violence, but also what the how this therefore created Black Lives Matter. Why now for Black Lives Matter? Black men and women have been killed by police for decades. So what was it about this spate of killings that brought Black Lives Matter um, to, uh, to the public eye? And what are the challenges facing that movement? Um, it is an incredibly informative and well-written book that really goes far deeper than the reports of the time. For example, I hadn't realized that Black Lives Matter was actually created by three black queer women in the States, um, which was something that you realize a lot of the faces for Black Lives Matter had become male uh, representation on television shows and news programs. And indeed, Wesley looked at the complications that brings when a mass movement starts having uh, leaders or self-appointed figureheads emerging in what is something that has its power in its mass social movement. Uh, he also looks at the problems of social media. So, for example, a lot of people uh, are very much thinking that Black Lives Matter came about because so many of these killings were caught on camera. In fact, Wesley says, although that's a key part, Wesley also looks at how it was the media depiction of these victims that really mobilized black communities across the USA. The way that there'd be inferences that, you know, perhaps this person who had been killed was perhaps wearing a hoodie, looked a bit odd, was playing with a toy gun, might have stolen something, as if this was somehow um, therefore excusing the fact that they were murdered by the police and how Wesley found that it was those kind of portrayals that actually triggered the protests that led to Black Lives Matter. Um, and Wesley also asks really important questions such as what does it mean of the representation of always seeing black men and women in the news as victims, as murder victims? Um, and even how Black Lives Matter were trying to um, address this and what kind of challenges this brings to have all these videos of dead black men and women um, lying in the streets um, or being killed, routinely killed by white police officers. Um, and indeed where they, Black Lives Matter goes from now. So this was, there's so many questions. It seems such a little book, but um, so densely packed and just informative and uh, brilliant and really engaging. Um, it's, it's hard not to read this now in the light of Trump's victory. Wesley wrote this before November, he wrote it, during the presidential campaign uh, where it was not clear that Trump was going to win um, and sort of the way the book hangs at the end about uh, the Black Lives Matter when they sort of, where do you go from here well we've got to keep fighting and you realize the stakes are now so so high for Black Lives Matter in a under an administration which is steeped in white supremacy, it's hard to see where they can make any ground against institutional racism, which is so deeply entrenched. Um, so where they go from here, it's really hard. But uh, whatever happens, of course, uh, this book will stand as an extraordinary historical record on the origins of a very influential movement that wide, deserves as much widespread support as possible, because obviously it's going to get really hard. Uh, but this was an amazing and informative read about something that was in the headlines for so long. Um, but often the human stories and the reality and the truth 
of what was going on was lost or obfuscated by white media reporting. Uh, so this is incredibly powerful and non-fiction can be dry, absolutely not. Uh, Wesley himself is black so he uh, really infuses um, uh, the sort of very factual elements with his own experiences without those experiences overwhelming what he's trying to get across and his own uh, upbringing and sort of the talk that all black kids are given about how to behave when a police officer is around and again this provokes the questions you know if a black community of black men and women do are peaceful and do everything right and never resist arrest and they are still getting killed what incentive is there to stay peaceful and all the sort of uh, how this is all linked to under the Obama administration, how you can have a black man in the White House and still be shot in the street because you're black. Uh, an extraordinary book that is so resonant and asks as many questions as answers that it brings. This is terrific. I adored it. Wesley Lowry, they can't kill us all.